The FBI taking a very close look now at the wife of Omar Mateen, the gunman responsible for killing 49 people inside of a gay nightclub. Sources now say that Noor Salman, the wife, knew about the shooting and was actually with her husband when he bought ammunition. She also allegedly told investigators she tried to talk him out of hurting anyone. Could she face criminal charges for not telling authorities? To talk more about the possible legal implications that she faces is Seth Waxman, a former federal prosecutor and member of Dixon Wright Law Firm. Good morning. Thanks for being with good, us. Good morning. So uh, federal prosecutors, they've convened this grand jury. Could she face serious charges here? She sure could. Um, when there's a crime of this magnitude, law enforcement is going to want to hold anyone accountable that played a role in bringing this about. Uh, for the wife of the shooter, the issue is whether she is an aider and a better to the crime at issue. So did she take steps to cause this crime to happen, do things that helped um, create the problems that occurred? We're going to wait for law enforcement to put all the pieces together here, but we have heard different scenarios, everything from her simply trying to talk him out of doing something like this, which would show that she was aware of the potential of something, uh, to being at the club with him on some occasion, to actually being with him to purchase ammunition. What is the most damning evidence in a case like this against someone who may be considered an accessory or at least knowledgeable about a crime? Sure, if she took affirmative steps, like driving her husband to the crime scene to scope it out, to plan the crime, taking him to purchase the murder weapon, the ammunition, if she participated in acts like that, she could be facing serious charges. In fact, being treated under the law as if she were the principal shooter, um, facing 49 counts of murder and all of the counts of attempted murder and the same penalties that go along with that. Seth, I know it's different, but you know, we, we watch these crime shows on TV and we think we know everything, uh, including how the wife often has immunity from testifying against a husband or spousal, you know, courtesy or what have you. This though is different. Uh, it is. Um, if there is a statement that's made in furtherance of a crime, there is an exception to the marital privilege, the privilege you're talking about. So if during the course of their marriage, they were married, she and, and her husband talked about, let's get in a car, let's drive to this club, and let's think about committing this crime, and someone were to have heard uh, that conversation or she were to recount that conversation, that would be a statement in furtherance of a conspiracy and would trump the marital privilege that you speak of. Let me follow up uh, quickly on that and ask you about state of mind. We've heard from his ex-wife. The ex-wife alleges that he beat her, that she was in fear, that she left, you know, what have you. What about if she did this under duress? Does that come in? I'm just asking the question. Sure. Um, at the end of the day, no. Uh, if she performed these acts um, voluntarily in, in the sense that she got in the car herself, she steered the wheel herself, she didn't have a gun pointed at her head, mm -hmm. then no, the law will not recognize duress to be an excuse. Of course, you know, if she faces charges, her lawyer will be arguing that she did this under duress, I'm sure, that her husband may have been abusive and all the things that go along with that. But as a, as a legal matter, will she be able to get out from underneath charges simply because she feels like she had a hard time with her husband, or even worse, that he may have been abusive? No, the answer is uh, no to that question. Yeah, that was one of our big questions, which we would assume that the defense would bring up in court, should it come to that, uh, is if, in fact, you know, he went as far, and of course, purely hypothetical here, as threatening her and saying, if you don't go along with me on this, then bad things may happen to you or your loved ones. That doesn't, that doesn't matter in the eyes of prosecutors? Uh, the short answer is no. Uh, there were opportunities uh, along that timeline where she could have picked up the phone and called law enforcement. Um, someone would have sympathy for a woman that goes under that kind of duress or stress. But look at the alternative. Look at what we're now facing with a, a heinous act, uh, the most serious mass shooting in U.S. history. So one could see the policy behind that. The, a woman who you know might be facing some problems or the death, the innocent killing of, of you know, tens of people, and that's horrible. So what's next in this, Seth? What can we expect as a public? Sure. So the prosecutors and law enforcement FBI agents are going to do everything they can to try to substantiate uh, what she is uh, seems to be telling law enforcement, that she did participate in some way. And if she did so, they're going to be putting a lot of pressure on her to do two things. One, admit culpability or responsibility. And most importantly, they want to know if there's anybody else that was involved in this, financed this crime, knew about it, facilitated it 
if they can gain that information from her, that would be helpful to law enforcement. And of course, her lawyers will try to use that as a bargaining chip to try to get her a reduction in sentence. I, I'm sure, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, which in this you know, court case may be the defense attorney. Uh, prosecutors are probably under pressure or want to have someone because the, the trigger person is dead. So they probably want to have someone who is held responsible for this heinous act. How far could it go when they look at, if not her or if her plus others, what could potentially a plus others have done that would be worthy of someone else being charged? Just if, they, if she told somebody and they didn't do something about it, how far down the line does it go? Sure, so I, I want to be clear that silence cannot be prosecuted. So if she told a relative or a friend and they just did not do anything, didn't take steps to bring it about, didn't conceal it, didn't cover it up, the law is not going to allow her to be, those people to be prosecuted. On the other hand, if someone provided him material support, money, financing, helped pay for the weapons, knowing that these are the types of acts he was planning to carry out, then absolutely. Those people could and should be prosecuted. All right. Former federal prosecutor Seth Waxman, thanks for spending some time with us Thank today. Thank you.